Welcome to The Rich Report, a podcast with news and information on high-performance computing. Today, my guest is Stace Hipperson. Stace is CTO and co-founder of a company called Real Status. Uh, welcome to the show, Stace. Thanks, Rich. Great to be here. You bet. Now, Stace, you guys have a brand new product, something called Hyperglance. So who is your company and who do you help? Okay, so yeah, Hyperglance is a visualization product. And in particular, we're visualizing IT data. So uh, as a lot of your listeners probably know, there's a lot of data out there and uh, they're generally in silos. So you've got uh, energy data, you've got uh, element data, VM data, flow data, but you really want to connect those dots together so you can uh, see the end to end. So what we do is we visualize all those silos of data so you can then gain insight uh, using the power of your eyes, using the power of your brain. That's very cool. So uh, would this be used by like a system administrator or somebody maybe at a higher level? Yeah, so we it's it works on, on many levels uh, from the system administrator right up to the CEO. But generally if you've got cross-functional uh, responsibility. So if you need to have a look at the uh, the compute, you need to look at the uh, storage and also you need to look at the the networking, you know those three things are very very correlated. Any one of those things go wrong then you have a problem and with virtual machines that's it's becoming more and more common because uh, virtual machines all have compute, they all have obviously need networking and they need storage. So works with sysadmins, it works on the managerial level as well so they can get a great overview of, of what's going on and, and capacity management and also works on the CTO CIO level so they can get a, a very good high level view and also they can show their boss, they can show the board, they can show the CEO where they're spending their money and uh, maybe even where they need to spend their money. Sure, sure. I can tell you from I run a um, the website inside HPC and it runs on some virtual machine somewhere, and I've been frustrated because sometimes it just goes down and I have no visibility into what's going wrong other than to hit the reboot button, right? So I don't know if it's the network, the memory, uh, what what the cause is. Yeah. So I could see this it, being exactly. Very so you know, if you're getting extra latency on the storage, that's going to affect your application. If you're getting errors on your network, that's obviously going to affect the application. And it comes down to it, it's user experience. Um, and, you know, in the compute side as well, if, if, if you're overbooking on a, a physical server, which it all runs on physical servers, if you're overbooking, mm -hmm. then, you know, you need to know that. You need to see what's, uh, what's going on. So, cool. yeah, it's, it's more, uh, we're very visual uh, race. <laughs> uh, I'm certainly very visual. So um, this is why we created Hyperglance. So can you give us a demo here? Certainly can. So uh, at what you can see here uh, is a map of physical and virtual. It's uh, fully fully rotatable. Uh, here we, we can zoom in. You can zoom out. Uh, what we're showing here are the physical, which I'm highlighting here, and two virtual clusters on either side. So what that enables you to do, it, you, can, you, know, you can see the end-to-end -end and you can see all the physical as, and the virtual as well. We, enable, we also enable 2D and 3D. So you need details sometimes. Yeah. Uh, text is a great thing as well. So what we have, we have the 2D pane and we have the 3D pane. So what the 3D pane en enables you to do to really you know, zoom in, to be able to see a great overview of what's going on, being able to see the flow, being able to see uh, the virtual machines and what they're connected to, including the storage and the physical. Uh, we then have the, uh, the the 2D panes that give you all the detail. We have a data pane on the left here, so we can get you know the, here we've got host name, IP address, etc. Uh, in the middle we have the attributes. So each one of these uh, these services or these devices have attributes. So we have CPU, RAM, hard drive. Uh, we also have um, criticality. Uh, you know whether it's vulnerable or not. If you if you've got an intrusion uh, detection or uh, vulnerability scanner, etc. And uh, on the bottom right hand side, we've got our graphing solution. Now, one of the great powers of, of having uh, the visualization is we can use visualization to give you an overview, as I said, end to end, straight away, where am I, like a heat map example. So, in our 
profile section here. It's basically a filter. So we can, uh, we can show any attributes or, or, or anything in the data pane and we can filter on that. The CPU filter. Um, and what I've said is, I'm, you know, I'm interested in the CPU, what's hot, what's cold, mm -hmm. less than 10% of CPU. Let's make that blue because, you know, it's a capacity management. Uh, if it's less than 10%, what's it doing? Maybe you need to consolidate that or get rid of it. Uh, anything over 90%, I've said, okay, let's glow red so I can really see, uh, you know, where my trouble spots are. We can then zoom in here. Uh, and as you can see here, we've got a, a a box that's red, that's a host, IP address, etc. And what we're showing just at a glance is uh, these three speedos on, on either side here, CPU, RAM, and hard drive. So I can see, you know, just at a very quick glance, what's going on and what's happening. Uh, so we then enable you to connect in to uh, uh, third-party management solutions because, as I said, we're a visualization software. You have people have plenty of management software. Uh, they have something to manage their VMs, to manage their physical, to manage their uh, storage. And, uh, you know, they, people spend a lot of money and uh, they're great, they're great uh, programs for what they do. We enable you to find the solution, or find the error more quickly when you make that decision, connect into the uh, box that needs yeah. to, uh, to act on that. So, Stace, where's the data coming from? Do you have, like, sensors built into these servers or is this just demons running somewhere? Where's all this coming? Where do you get it? So, uh, yeah, we have a connector system. So at the moment here, we're connecting into VMware uh, through their API. Uh, I like VMware a lot because, you know, they give us all the relationships and all the data. We just need to visualize that. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's also an element manager that gets its uh, information from it using SNMP, which is, you know, the standard way that people generally uh, monitor and, and manage their, their networking devices. So we're yeah that's how we get the data when we bring in the data from the sources that uh, the customers already have. And how would the, they in the old days in the old way how would they interact with would they just be looking at command line stuff and and running reports so how would that work? Yeah, generally people uh, they have a look at top ten lists. Yeah. Or they have a look at graphs. Now if I've got you know a couple of thousand devices a top ten list is not really going to tell me much. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so I mean that's at scale. I mean, two D two D mapping people have, but it just doesn't scale. Three D we enable you to scale a lot more, uh, and also there's a physics engine. That's how the, it lays itself out, and it's dynamic. So, you know, uh, it, it, any deltas or anything that changes in the map, whether that be physical or virtual, our map automatically changes, so you can see what's going on, uh, and uh, you don't need to use Visio or, or you know adjust those hierarchies on the 2D maps that are, are current, currently available. Sure. And this thing has a very organic look and feel to it. Is that by design or is that um, just what's more intuitive? It's, well, it, it, no, it's very organic because uh, the physics engine, well, we're based on, oh, sorry, organics are based on physics. Yes. Uh, so, you know, that's why it looks organic is because um, it's based on physics as well. The physics engine lays itself, uh, lays it out using repulsion and, and springs mm -hmm. um, and also a few other bits of secret source in there as well. So we're looking at different colored lines. Is this like a real time? I um, see that green is good and you, you could make uh, what there's some pink lines. Does that mean indicate some other thing? Are you looking in the graph or are you looking at in, in the 3D pane? In the 3D pane there. I uh, know, um, in the 3D pane, so yeah. So here, I mean, it's completely configurable. I've just colored it um, uh, as red is bad and, and blue mm -hmm. is is under capacity. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, we can change that. So here I've selected a bandwidth filter. Okay. And what that's showing it on the linking. Yeah. I've said, once again, red is bad and, and blue is under capacity. So ah. here we can see... Uh, yeah. So, and we can we can combine those as well. So here we can see, for example, CPU and bandwidth. So you can get you know a really good idea of, of the heat map and for capacity management for troubleshooting and that kind of thing as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And is there any limit to scale on so something like this? Release one, we're going for uh, ten thousand separate entities, uh -huh. uh, whether they be physical or virtual. Yeah. Uh, but uh, release 1.1, 1.2, etc. We're going to be uh, scaling a lot more than that. Um, obviously, you know, I, I would love to get to the millions. Sure. Uh, but there's certainly the hundreds of thousands are uh, entirely entirely possible. Are there environments out there like that? 
uh, with millions of entities? In the uh, there are, well, millions of data points. Uh -huh. So, you know, physical and devices, you get to a certain thing. But as I said, it, it's a... Uh, it, it's a generic visualization what we're showing here of the physical and the virtual but you know when you talk about data points there are certainly data sets out there that are in the millions mm -hmm. and that, that's more an aspirational target at the moment you know it's 10,000 and, uh, and we'll scale from there okay so which, when you, which you, more, more than covers yeah sorry go ahead well, I was just thinking, uh, you know, how this would how how would this change like a workflow for somebody that did have to manage these these big, large, um, business critical kinds of things? How would it change how they go about their day? Do you think? Yeah. So, generally, someone who um, who has cross functional capabilities, uh, sorry, responsibilities, what what they, you know, they have a look at reports. Uh, they will have a look at some uh, some high level. A uh, high-level map, for example, like um, a whole city will go red rather than just one mm -hmm. device. Mm -hmm. And so they spend a lot of time, you know, trying to find out where the problem is and where the connections are. So, yeah. so here, you know, we enable them to really just get a great end-to-end -end view to get a very, very uh, dynamic view to to really be more proactive. So, you know, the person is a lot more proactive every day. They also can um, highlight the area. So, highlight the um, area that's an issue and then push it over yeah. to the responsible person. Now, generally, people, you know, you spend, say, 50, 60, sometimes even 80% of the time trying to find out where the area of responsibility is and then yes. give it over. But, you know, mm -hmm. if you can find out where it is and make a quick decision, it's this per person's issue or this, yeah. this problem, and then you pass it over and then they can go down to the deep, they can deep dive it and, and fix it. So, you know, a lot of time saved. Which is sure. time is money, right? Right, right. Very cool. So let's let's uh, let's talk a little bit about the company. Uh, we have our inside startups a uh, little bent here. Uh, uh, how long have you guys been been at this? Right. So uh, we've been coding probably about eighteen months now. Mm -hmm. uh, the real status is a spin out from uh, from a professional services company that uh, I was at. So, you know, my background is, is network engineering, but also mm -hmm. some uh, enterprise architecture, et cetera. And what I wanted was something like this. I wanted just a map of, of everything so I could see the end to end. Because, uh, you know, I'd go into big customers and they wouldn't have any documentation. Yeah. Uh, you know, how would I, I wouldn't be able to do capacity management. Um, I wouldn't be able to, you know, find out what's what and, and who's, what's responsible. So uh, I, I wanted this. So uh, we went and had a look at uh, the technologies available, and you know, 3D mapping hasn't really been. You know, there's a lot of great games out there that uses technology, the physics engine, obviously the graphics, but mm -hmm. it hasn't really transferred over into the enterprise. Yeah. So uh, yeah, so we coded for about a about a year, then we spun out. Uh, we've raised, uh, I think, about two million dollars so far. And uh, so now we're kicking on. Release one was about a month ago. So well, that, we're all, all go. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it seems like this virtualization market is, is huge and growing. I mean, I think VM World was, what was that, like 17,000 people were at that show. This is, uh, this is very big. Yeah. Uh, and so do you do that kind of market projection, what your potential, uh, you know, customers could be, that kind of thing? Is that important when you go for money like that? Uh, well, you know, you, you can always predict, you know, you can make up anything in a spreadsheet. <laughs> we, uh, you know, we, we've been, we, we're being a bit more sanguine than that. And we obviously we have targets and um, yeah. we, uh, you know, we don't want to go out and, and raise a whole lot of money and, and lose, a, lose a lot of equity. So, you know, we, we will get to profitability with the money we've raised. You know, how mm -hmm. hard we go and, and how big we go depends on, um, you know, what kind of traction we get in the market. Okay. And uh, is is your target, is it Fortune 500 or you don't segment like that? Where Where's where's the sweet spot, do you think? Yeah, so, so the sweet spot, what we think at the moment is uh, well, a, a company's value IT as, you know, the core of their business, which is yeah. becoming more and more. So mm -hmm. banking, for example. So uh, bank, yeah. bank, banking is, is, is an IT shop in, in 
uh, in financial <laughs> in financial yeah. closing, really. Uh, they, they rely on their IT, they spend money on the IT, and they have a lot of data. So banking is, is one sector that's very good for us. ISPs on the, on, on the other side, also they yeah. obviously, no network, uh, no, um, no money. Uh, they also yeah. be doing a lot of uh, outsourcing, that, sorry, offshoring, etc. So, you know, the net ISPs, they're the ones that have the public or the private or the hybrid clouds. Uh, yeah. So, you know, virtualization is not going away. Uh, hybrid clouds, I mean, are becoming actually a reality now. I don't think mm -hmm. too many people are going to be pushing out just public. Uh, hybrid clouds are, are, seem to be the, uh, the way to go. Yeah. And certainly that's the way I would go. So, um, you know, virtualization makes things a lot harder to manage. Mm -hmm. It makes, yeah. you know, it's great ROI. But once you virtualize, everything has a storage connection. Everything has a virtual switch and a virtual connection, you know, virtual networking. Uh, and also, they've got, obviously, the compute. And now people are going to have GPU clusters as well. So, you know, with yes. um, remote desktops, et cetera, you can have banks of uh, GPUs. So you're going to have a CPU cluster, a GPU cluster, you know, physical hardware, physical network, uh, logical network, uh, logical hardware. You know, it, yeah. the end, it just goes on and on. So, yes. uh, you know, it, 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 it's really hard to uh, track down what, what's going on and what's connected. Now, we can, let me just, I'm not sure if you've still got... Um, yes, I still have it. ...the video here. going here, but, you know, yep. it's, yeah, so it's... It's what you show and when you show it. So the, the, one mm -hmm. of the power of um, the power of graphics is I can, for example, just hide things. I can make things transparent, and then oh, I can sure. add things on there as well. So, yeah, I mean, even if you do get things that are highly connected, you know, you don't need to see everything all the time, but you need to be able to see right. it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So here, for example, what we're showing are uh, the... Uh, Orange links are the storage, the yellow mm. links are the compute, um, and the, uh, the white boxes here, they're the, they're the physical devices. What we're also showing here is each virtual machine that is um, gray is uh, there as, a, as an image, but not spun up, so it's not running. So as you can mm -hmm. see quite easily in this thing, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of storage space that's just not being used. So we could easily just get rid of that. Um, so you know, it's it's a combination of colours uh, and and the visualisation and you know the physics engine that lays it out enables you to yeah. get a lot more insight uh, very quickly rather than looking at sure. as I said spreadsheets etc. Yeah. So you've been shipping this code for a little while now. What kind of reaction are you getting? Uh, we're getting great reaction. Um, I've, yeah. I've heard it quite a few times. You know, saying this is the missing piece. People. Mm. Um, in the last decade or so, uh, you know, they've got the data. They've got the management, well, they thought they've got the management solutions. So, you know, they just need to tie it together. And they've been trying to do visualizations using, as you know, static maps or, you know, business intelligence. You yeah. see a lot of that, it's, it's graphs. Um, and the trouble is, is, once you get to the graphs, et cetera, you lose the granularity. And, uh, you know, what they want is they want to bring that granularity out so they can see trending, they can see patterns. Um, and the human brain is great at pattern recognition. You know, that's mm -hmm. how we survive. <laughs> we see patterns yes. and we see correlations. And, you know, we want to bring those patterns, those good patterns and bad, bad patterns out of the data so you can, you know, you can see it. Yeah, that's very cool, Stace. So I guess uh, one wrap-up question here. I mean, is this, uh, if somebody wanted to engage with this and kick the tires, is it a big disruptive deal to to get it in there and then try it out? Uh, no, that's work? so. So no, we we work alongside the current uh, the current management solutions. We don't replace anything. So you know, mm -hmm. they've got the data. They've got the management solutions that are great for what they do. You know, they spend a lot of money on them, and the companies out there, are, you know, they've got great management solutions. But you know, we enable you to use more of the data. So we come in. We have the server that hooks into the data sources, so it's non disruptive. Uh, and then it, it obviously visualizes the client. So if they want to go to uh, real-status.com, have a look around the website. Uh, we've got a, a demo tab there, and they can contact us, and we can we can have a chat. I really want to uh, thank you for coming on the show today. And uh, I did want to ask you, what the, what's it like being a, a, a startup? Is, is, 
you know, is that something, are you excited about your job when you, you get up in the morning? Yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, there's, it's some trepidation <laughs> on occasion, it's a, it's a big yeah. learning curve, yeah. that's for sure, but, um, yeah. you know, it, it's, it's one of these things, you know, you're working for yourself, you're uh, making the decisions, uh, you know, you live and die by your decisions, it, it, it's a great thing, I'm not saying it, it's easy, um, mm -hmm. it's, it's been really good, but it uh, has been a steep learning curve, I'll, I'll I'll give you that. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is exciting. I think uh, I think you guys have some really uh, great potential here, and I'd, I'd love to check back in with you maybe in six months or so and see how it's going. Yeah, great. Uh, how's that sound? Not a problem. Perfect. All right, sir. Okay, folks, well, that's it for the Rich Report. Stay tuned for more news and information on high-performance computing. <laughs>